Today we're getting freaky with my fish sando, my freaky fish sando. Hi, I'm Eric Wareheim. Uh, you might know me as America's number one top food blog. I'm also a Hollywood director and an actor, and I'm also an author. I made a new book, it's called Foodheim. And guess what? We're getting freaky today. We're doing my fish freak sando. It's a beautiful fish sandwich. So let's get started. Step one, let's fry the fish. Make sure you got your whole setup going. Make sure you got some oil in here. You want around 375, that's a perfect frying temperature. I use peanut oil. Or you can use veggie oil if you're lame. Or you can boil a fish and I'll kill you. No, I'm just My mom used to boil tilapia in a Tupperware with some water and some oregano. And that was my dinner. So, I, I mean, I love her. I love her to death, but that is the opposite of what this sandwich is. Now, what you want is a beautiful little white fish, right? We have sole here, I love sole. First thing we're gonna do, always season your proteins. I can't stress this enough. Go to your friend Teddy's house and he's doing some fried chicken. He's like, Eric, come over, I'm doing some fried chicken. I'm like, great, I bite of that chicken. And it sucks, because he didn't season the chicken before it went into the batter. So that's what I wanna teach you today. Make sure you just salt and pepper it a little bit. Let's see, it's not gonna be salty. It's just gonna bring out that perfect flavor of this already gorgeous sole. Look at that. It's a three-step process to get our fish ready for the frying. We're gonna do a little flour. I also, I season that flour. Salt and pepper, that's all you need. You wanna spice it up a little bit, put a little cayenne in there. Now our second little vessel, put some milk. No big, let's crack an egg. <laughs> Okay. Take two! Fish seasoned perfectly. We got our flour seasoned, just a little salt and pepper. We're gonna put a little bit of milk in here and just one egg. Just a little binding agent. First started going to Florida in college and I would go to Appalach, which is Appalachicola, but they call it Appalach down there. It's a little fisherman's town and a bunch of hippies moved there in the 70s or 80s or 90s, I don't quite know. They were cool and they wanted to get out of the big city and they settled on Appalach. And all you have down there is these huge gulf oysters and beautiful grouper. And we that's where I learned how to shuck an oyster. That's where I learned about fried shrimp, fried grouper, fried fish sandwiches. So the inspiration for that dish initially started in Appalach. Got a beautiful piece of sole here. Let's do a light dusting. This is step one. Bring up that fish. Shake off that flour fish. Let's dip it in our egg wash. Side one, side two. Really drain that egg. There's nothing worse than an eggy fish freak. And then right in the panko. Now panko is something that you don't really see tons of in the South. It's more breadcrumbs, but I fry everything in panko because it's. I want that super, super crispiness. What I'm doing is kind of taking some from the bottom, pressing it in. Make sure you have like a nice consistent bite here. And what's cool about the fish freak, it's just, it's not your normal fish sandwich. It's freakish, it's big, it's dramatic, it's visual. Besides being a chef and a food blogger, I'm a visual artist and that's what we want. If you have a spider, cool. If not, you can use some tongs. Just make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. I give it a little, little nudgy here. And this is gonna go fast. This is gonna be about two minutes maybe. You just wanna look for that beautiful crispness now, the last time I went down to the Gulf, it was actually on my bachelor party. We did a kind of a food wine trip from Atlanta down to Miami. Yes, we went to T-Pain's Club Onyx. That was crazy. See this color? We're almost there. It's gorgeous. You never want to overcook your fish. Your fish is almost coming. So we went, we went to Tampa. We did this wine night, and we're drinking these old wines. If you drink old wines like 1910, we call it ghost wines because the fucking ghosts of whatever's going on in the world, in France too. France is fucked up. World War II shit going on. Fucking French people hiding wine from the Nazis. It's amazing. But you drink these wines and it just, it has this feeling and you have crazy nightmares and you're super hungover the next day. We have to get to Miami. Do we go straight to Miami? Hell no. We take a two hour detour to the, go to the Gulf and to find this fish shack that I've been hearing so much about. I mean, this is gorgeous. I think I'm gonna pull her right now. Let's give her a little bit more color. 
So we're hungover. My friend JD, Emilio, we're like, they're like, please, can we just go to Miami and just relax? We're so hungover. We barely slept. We had ghosts in our body all night. And I said, absolutely not. We're going to the Gulf. We got to get this fish shack. We got to sit on the turquoise waters. We got to eat this simple thing that I've been, I kind of been craving since I've been going to Appalachia in college. And we, we got there. It was a wild adventure. So this fish sandwich is inspired by that experience. This is the color you want. It's going to be, it's nice and textural, but it's cooked all the way through. But the absolute most important thing is you got to season your fish right when it comes out of that hot oil. Salt will really permeate that Christmas and give you that unbelievable bite. I'm going to let that rest for a little bit. We're going to get on that sauce and then we're going to butter those buns. It's sauce time! <laughs> we have fried our fish. I did it perfectly on my first try. No one helped me on the whole crew. It was just me. And now we're making our sauce. Half a cup of sour cream, that's our base. Do a little gloop right there. A little bit of salt, just doing a kind of a generous pinch. A little pepper. Oh, let's add some of the fun stuff. Horseradish. Gorgeous. Hot mustard. Don't do that French stuff. Don't do the Pitsman stuff. I know Tim Heideck would love that. This is crazy. A little bit of sugar it really makes the sauce balance. These pickles are very special to me. My opa, my grandfather in Deutschland, Germany, was a cooper. Cooper is a barrel maker. And he made barrels for these German pickles. And if you've, ever, if you've never had one of these son of a guns, oh my God, it's like, it's not like any American pickle. It's not like the half sours and the deli. It's like, there's a little bit of sweetness. Mm. It's cool to make something that reminds you of your family. This literally reminds me of my opa. The sauce reminds me of my wife. The Fish Freak Sando reminds me of T-Pain's Onyx Club. I don't know if you've ever seen this technology, but I do a triple pickle stack up like this. <laughs> and we do some dice work. Look at that. Three at a time. I've seen this on TV, so I'm gonna do this. So uh, let me just chop these pickles. I want them nice and fine. And you might be asking yourself, hey, that's the guy from Master of None. Why the hell is he trying to teach me some cooking. Why does he have the number one cookbook in the country, Food Hind? How dare he? But I've actually been researching and doing cooking stuff for 15 years. As soon as I moved to Los Angeles, I started eating food. I started drinking wine and just like literally exploring the world and cooking. What else do we got? Lemon. You gotta always have some lemon. This is the acid component, like that. Upper hand. Upper palm, Just, you don't get any of those seeds in there because the last thing you want is a little seed in your sow. So I don't have the strength for one hand, so I just do a, a second hand here. Oh! Okay, we got our lemon in the sauce. Let's get a dill component. I think I call for two tablespoons in the book, but just start using your senses. Be like, oh, that's, that looks like a perfect amount of dill. And this one you could do kind of a rough chop because it's kind of nice to see a little of those dill fronds in the sauce. You don't want them sticking in your teeth, so just do kind of a medium rough chop. Gorgeous. This is a meal in itself. You got your fat, you got your acid, you got your spice, mustard, and horseradish. I mean, you don't even need a sandwich. You don't even need a bun, you don't need fish. I would just eat this. What I really want to do is just dip this and fucking party, but this is, t this is live television, so I'm gonna stay to the book. So we're gonna slather this with a little bit of butter. We're gonna griddle it, and that's gonna be our base. This is so important for sandwich technology. Okay, we got our butter buns, we're ready to party. Let's grill them up. Toss them right in this green thing. Oh, we're going good already. You wanna do this for all kinds of your sandwiches. If you're doing a smash burger, you want to do this. You just want to butter those buns. There's nothing worse than a lukewarm bun or a cold bun. All right, I'm getting to a place that I like. You see what I'm talking about? This is adding a lot of beautiful kind of unctuousness to the sandwich. You're not going to believe it. A little bit of butter, a little bit of browning. I'm going to put it on for just another second and we're going to assemble our sandwich. All right, we got our perfect butter buns. Let's assemble the fish freak. Take a little bit of this fancy sauce our gorgeous fried sole. Put that right on top. A little bit more of the sauce. Now, here's a little secret. This is not in the book, 
but I'm gonna put it on there because I eat this a lot. I eat it once a day. Every morning I wake up, I do a fish freak. That's what I do. That's how I have this beautiful figure. But what I've learned over the time between I made the book and now is like, I want a little bit more acid kick. So I just pickle some onions, which is super easy. The vinegar is in my book, just look it up. Um, and also the color of this is just kind of gorgeous. I let a couple danglers hang over. We're gonna serve this with some lemon wedges, a little bit more salt. Gorgeous. We do that top bun. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me with this? <laughs> Let's take a bite of this fish freak. Wow. I'm going right in. Look at that. That's a perfect fry on there. Just the right amount of that fancy sauce. Those pickled onions. That's amazing. I'm back from the Gulf of Mexico. Hung over. Afterburns. And if you want the recipe, it's in the description down below. But also, you can just buy this Foodheim. Let me just open to a random page. Are you kidding? It's fucking nuts. Sometimes when I eat the fish freak, it does remind me of how hungover I was when we were always with my friends at that fish shack. So I do just vomit a little bit, just, and it's, I can't do anything about it. I've gone to therapists to try to solve that, but I'll just do a quick puke and then I'll come back. <laughs> 